At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. You lose! Good day, sir! Hi, welcome to Chem Mistakes. Here we go through actual wrong answers from students on chemistry problems. Um, here we have a question that asks, which block has the larger specific heat capacity, block one or block two? Uh, both are made of the same material. Block two is obviously larger. Student answer, the second block has the larger specific heat capacity since it will require a large amount of energy to heat it up. Uh, student answer involves a lot of things that are correct, but one big error. We want to do those, we want to go through what exactly is specific heat capacity, uh, and what is the student mistaking with it here? Uh, and to do that, there are a couple of different ways to view this. There's an algebraic way and there's also a graphical way. And I want to start with the graphical way. So when we're looking at specific heat capacity, we're really deriving that from something called heat capacity. Or at least starting with this experimental evidence here. So when we're looking at heat, or Q, uh, being put into a particular substance, and then we track its temperature. What we'll find is that for different substances, they will change differently as more energy is supplied to them. So let's have substance B and substance A here. And what we've done is we have changed their temperature the same amount from here to here. But A has had a certain amount of energy required to do that, this much. And B has had a much larger amount of energy to change its temperature. So B is more challenging or requires more energy to change temperature by the same amount. That would mean that B has a larger heat capacity. Capacity being the ability to store. That sounds simple and we experience a lot of things like that, but really when you start with that it's quite, it's quite shaking a little bit to think that you can add a certain amount of energy to something and its temperature will change by different amounts. So temperature usually correlates very well with energy. It's, it's how fast the particles are moving uh, in a kinetic energy sense. And so if we had a certain amount of energy, we might expect that the temperatures would change by the same amount. But for some reason, different, different types of substances will change by different amounts. Now part of that is the amount of substance, which we'll usually use mass for. So the slopes of these lines are the heat capacities. Heat capacity is a ratio of how much heat is transferred to the substance versus how much the temperature changes. So what we could do here is we could use the slopes of these lines to give us information about the heat capacity. If we think about the slope here as our heat capacity, we can write out our function in kind of a y equals mx form, where y is heat, and then m is our slope, that's our heat capacity, and our change in x here is our change in temperature. So heat capacity relates how much energy is supplied versus how much the temperature of that particular substance changes. Well, it turns out that mass also implicates this. So the mass must be involved somewhere within this heat capacity. So we have another term where we take the heat capacity and we change it into a single thing called specific heat capacity times the mass. So the more mass you have, the larger your heat capacity is, the more ability you have to retain and store energy without changing temperature as much. The specific heat capacity is different than the heat capacity in that this is per gram of material, and this is per object. So this is very useful for comparing different materials. Water has a higher specific heat capacity than metals do. Aluminum has a high specific heat capacity for a metal. Gold has a very low specific heat capacity for a metal. Heat capacity is good for comparing objects. The ocean has a very large heat capacity. A swimming pool has a large heat capacity. A cup of water has a larger heat capacity than a small chunk of metal. A piece of metal has a low heat capacity. So this is per object, this is per amount of things. So if we come back to our question then, the question said which one has the larger specific heat capacity? So the fact that these are of the same material means that they have the same specific heat capacity. They have the same ability per gram to change temperature or resist change in temperature when heat is being supplied. Two has a larger heat capacity. And 
And so the student here is explaining heat capacity when they're asked about specific heat capacity. The second block has the larger heat capacity since it will require a larger amount of energy to change its temperature by the same amount. They're talking about heat capacity. In specific heat capacity, we could have a 10 gram block here and a 30 gram block here. This one has three times a larger heat capacity. But when I divide that heat capacity by the masses, I'm going to end up with the same specific heat capacity. Let's go ahead and try and work that out. Let's go ahead and erase this here and actually plug in some numbers here. So I'm saying the specific heat capacity of these is the same. So in the first one, we might have a heat capacity of, I don't know, let's say 5, and that's joules per degree Celsius. It takes 5 joules to heat up this block 1 degree. Okay, that's equal to the specific heat capacity times the mass, by grams. So the specific heat in this case is 0.5. This one will have a larger heat capacity and it'll be three times as much, it'll be 15. But now I'm gonna end up with the same specific heat capacity because I'm gonna divide that by 30 grams to get this. So this is going to come out to 0.5 specific heat capacity as well. The specific heat capacity is a relevant of amount because it's based on the material. And so the material here being the same causes this to differ. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but... Uh...